Okay, so this video is going to cover an intro to Grasshopper. Um, what I like to refer to when teaching on Grasshopper um, is this link uh, to Mode Labs. Um, they have a really great Grasshopper primer. So um, this is their third edition. It covers the interface, the basics of the functionality, um, how Grasshopper uh, functions, how it interfaces with Rhino. It does a really great job of giving you a kind of foundation to build on um, in, in your 3D modeling. So again, this is uh, available online. Um, this is on our school library website as well, so you can find that. Um, it's also in the link to the syllabus. Um, so feel free to refer to this whenever you have questions. Um, this is a great reference when you're you're working in, in Grasshopper. Um, getting back to Rhino. So in Rhino, um, you're all used to the interface. Um, you can get to Grasshopper by clicking on the standard toolbar and going over, you'll see launch Grasshopper, this green icon. You can also type Grasshopper and enter and it'll load. So Grasshopper is a graphic uh, coding uh, methodology where you can basically create um, graphical uh, algorithms using kind of a really simple um, approach to coding where instead of writing lines of code, you're adding blocks and connecting those blocks together. And it's going to read the blocks from left to right. So it's a much easier workflow for those of us who are designers. We don't come from a coding background. Um, you know, you can still write Python code and, um, you know, uh, Visual Basic is the coding language for Rhino. So there's ways that you can, if you're really into coding, you can definitely kind of go in and code in, in Rhino. Um, but when it comes to most designers, I think a lot of us prefer Grasshopper because it's graphic based, it's a little more intuitive. Um, so you'll see that, you know, like most software, it's, there's toolbars. Um, these, are, these are called component palettes. So each um, series of components, each one of these palettes has a, a list of components. When you click on one of these components, you can drop it onto the, what's called the canvas. This is the canvas. You can zoom using the scroll button, pan using holding right mouse button. Um, so the way these uh, algorithms are written is we connect a series of these batteries or components. And Grasshopper is going to read this from left to right. So by creating a series of connections, you just saw how I did that. You just click and drag from one to the other. You're able to create uh, basically a custom command in Rhino. And so there's a real translation from um, Rhino geometry to what's happening in Grasshopper. You can pull geometry from Rhino into Grasshopper, and then you can push geometry out of Grasshopper back into Rhino. Okay, so when you're working in Grasshopper, it's not creating actual geometry. You could close this screen and nothing would be here. Type grasshopper again, it pops back up. You can minimize this and bring it back. But what's happening in here isn't gonna show up in Rhino unless you bake it. So baking it is gonna turn it into, you know, a Rhino geometry or curve that you can then manipulate further outside of grasshopper. So that's the workflow. And what's great about Grasshopper is that you can make changes in Grasshopper and then see them happen in real time in Rhino. So that's the workflow that a lot of architects have adopted, a lot of designers have adopted. Um, I used this for a number of years when working for a small firm and it became you know, part of our design workflow. It was a really integral part of the way we work and still is today for, for projects that, that I take on. We're constantly exploring in Grasshopper, and I think it tests the limits of what we're 
you know, what our, our preconceived ideas are, um, kind of pushes our, our knowledge a little bit. Um, so each um, component uh, palette is broken up based on its topic. So similar to how Rhino has tabs here for different topics, surfaces, solids, curves, Grasshopper is broken up the same way. And you know, there's more here. So vectors, curves, surfaces, mesh geometry, and then intersecting. So if you want geometry to collide, to Boolean add and subtract, to trim with other objects, if you wanted to transform something, twist, um, taper, those kind of things are here. Um, if you want it to display at a certain color or with a certain gradient, you can add gradient colors to your, to your meshes um, in Grasshopper, which is a really interesting thing. And then these are um, add-ons that I've downloaded. Um, parakeet, pufferfish, a lot of animals, weaver bird, um, there's a whole uh, kind of world of add-ons out there. So if you go to foodforrhino.com, you'll see um, add-ons and plugins that people have made, and they publish these, most of them free, um, but they're great for you know adding to the capabilities of Grasshopper, making things a little bit easier. One of them I recommend is Lunchbox. This is great for beginners. Um, this has been a, a really great introduction to Grasshopper for panelizing. Um, when you click on this image, it'll show you some of the things that it does. It can create different panel, panelization techniques, uh, diagrids, hex grids, skewed quads, all of these relatively easily. Um, yes, you could write your own Grasshopper script to do any of these, but they've made it simple so that this is just one component. Um, so you just take a surface, plug this in, and it'll generate a diagrid on it, for example. And then there's other geometry that you can produce pretty easily um, using this. So Lunchbox is a great kind of intro um, plug-in for Grasshopper. It's kind of like training wheels. It'll get you started and get you up and running relatively quickly. Um, there's other ones like Weaver Bird that allow you to do more with meshes. That's what this is. Mesh Plus is another one. Kangaroo um, now ships with Grasshopper. Um, at first, this was a, a separate plugin um, by Daniel Piker. Um, and this allows you to simulate um, gravity and physics in in Grasshopper and in Rhino, so you'll be able to simulate the the shape that fabric takes when it's hanging, and kind of see you know the effects of wind on that fabric. If you want to see that in real time in Rhino, um, you can set you know a bounciness to certain objects and get them to collide and bounce and move around things that you couldn't do in, in Rhino. So that's that lunchbox. Like I said, these components are very easy to use. You drop this in, it's asking for a surface. So you can bring in the surface parameter here. And you're seeing the way I'm connecting these components. You can hit delete. Um, I'm connecting components by just clicking and dragging. You can disconnect components by holding control and it disconnects that. If you wanted to connect multiple components together, you're going to hold shift. So if I were to just connect these, it's going to disconnect this one. However, if I hold shift, then you'll see this, my cursor turns green underneath it, and then you can connect multiple surfaces. So what I want to do is create those surfaces in Rhino and then bring them into Grasshopper. So if I create a four point surface in Rhino like this, and then what I'm going to do is go into Grasshopper, select the surface component, right click, set one surface, and then I can click on that surface. And so it's generating a diagrid based on this component here. Okay, and I actually don't need the second one, but you can see how when I manipulate this surface, it's going to manipulate this in real time. So 
Okay, so turning control points on, I'm able to manipulate the surface and you're seeing it being panelized in real time. Okay, and so once you have the panelized geometry that you want, you can select this and the way that we bake it is by using the middle mouse button, you can middle mouse click. And if you see this uh, egg icon, click bake and you'll see that get baked into Rhino. So now I can close Grasshopper. If I go to Shaded View, hide my original surface, and then you'll see that now I have this panelized surface. I have this diagrid um, geometry. So again, this is the workflow going from Grasshopper, baking it into Rhino. So whatever you select, Right, let's say I wanted to bake that original surface. Middle mouse click, bake. Now I've baked another surface of that. Right, so whatever you select and then middle mouse click and hit bake, that's what it's going to bring into Rhino. Okay, so you can use this workflow for a number of different things. You know, it can make your life easier. You can make it for, you know, the mundane tasks that like creating stairs or creating a curtain wall that are very time consuming to, to model. Um, like if you wanted to model a guardrail and you wanted that guardrail to adapt um, to the edge of any surface, All right? So I can hit control Z a few times, bring that back. Um, like let's say we wanted to create um, a handrail around this entire surface. Let's say this is the roof of your building, but you wanted a handrail that runs along the entire perimeter. I'm going to delete that component. So, you know, there's ways that you can, you can do that. I can extract um, the edge from this surface in Grasshopper, move that edge up a certain distance, and then pipe that curve all in Grasshopper so that the beauty of that is as I manipulate this surface, it's going to update in real time in Grasshopper. And if I save this file, I'll be able to use this on other projects that I have where I want a handrail on a surface. So there's a workflow here that I think most designers should consider adopting because it'll save time. But it also, you know, if, if uh, handled properly, you can, you can test a lot of ideas relatively quickly with Grasshopper without being weighed down um, by having to manually model them in Rhino. Okay, so for example, let's say we have this surface, right? And I've, I've already linked to it. I linked to it by dropping a surface component in here. And this is under the params tab. So there's surface, curve, point. Anytime you want to bring something in from Rhino, you want to find its corresponding component here. So if I wanted to bring a point in, in this case, I'm bringing the surface in. And notice when I click on it, it turns green. So that's indicating that it, it is linked. I can disassociate this component from that geometry by right-clicking and saying um, uh, clear values, and now it's no longer associated with it. And again, if I wanted to reconnect it, right-click, set one surface, and then click on the geometry. I can also set multiple surfaces too if I wanted many surfaces in this one component but I just want one. And what I want to do is extract these edges from the surface. Um, so there's a number of ways to, to do this. Um, there's a decompose or deconstruct um, BREP component. Um, and so when you click on, so each of these uh, component palettes, they have their own uh, drop down. So you can select this and then find deconstruct BREP that way. Click on it, drop it in. Or you can just double click on the canvas and type deconstruct. If I know the name of it, I can start typing it in and just find it that way. So there's a number of different ways you can pull in components into Grasshopper. Okay, so here I have my surface. And whenever you bring in a component, look at what it's asking for. Right, like these are the inputs, these are the outputs. So mouse over the inputs and it'll say, okay, it's looking for a, a base B rep. Okay, so it's asking for a geometry. And then, then it's going to output faces, edges, and vertices. 
So that's this is what's going in, this is what's coming out. So it's going to basically decom decompose or deconstruct whatever geometry we give it. So I'm going to plug in a surface, see if that works. It's asking for a B rep, and surfaces are included in that. And so if I mouse over this, it's actually going to give me some text telling me what it's pulling out. So it says one locally defined surface or defined value, and it's an untrimmed surface. Here we have four edges, so it's pulling out each edge into this component, and it's also pulling out four vertices. So it's found, if I click on this, it'll turn green. It's found the vertices, it's found the edges, and now I can take these edges and do something with them. So if I wanted to make this a handrail, I, I would take this edge, move it up, uh, let's say four feet. So I'm going to move this up four feet. So I can type four, and the number slider is going to pop up. Okay, so this number slider al allows me to change the values, and you'll see how that changes the the height in real time. Okay, and so whenever you're creating a a script or you know grasshopper definition as we call it. What we want to do is kind of come up with a game plan first. So we like to write out the pseudocode first. So in this case, the pseudocode would be step one, extract the edges. Step two, move those edges up maybe 36 inches or 42 inches. Move them up a certain distance, right? So I'm going to move them in the Z direction. Then I'm going to pipe that curve. Okay, so this will be a really simple um, definition, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to create the, the handrail we want. So I've extracted the edges. That's the first step of what I want to do. Then I want to move those edges up in the Z direction. So to move, I'm going to double click on the canvas and type move. There's a component here. Um, I believe it is... under, I guess it'd be transform. Yeah, it's under Euclidean. So um, if you go to transform and then you go to um, move, that's where this move component comes from. Again, you can double click on the canvas and just start typing it and you'll see it show up. Okay, so I wanna take those edges, I wanna move them up in the Z direction. So any move component has to have the geometry that we want to move, and it's asking for a vector. Now, I can't just plug in a number because a vector needs more than uh, an amplitude. It needs a direction. Okay, so I'm going to plug in. First, it's asking for geometry. I want the edges of that surface to be the geometry that I'm moving, and it's going to default to 1 in this case, um, or 10, I guess, in this case. Um, and it's asking for a vector. So I need a vector. There's a couple ways to do this. I can go to the Vector tab. And on the right, one thing uh, to note, when I'm working, always go to Display. When you're first opening Grasshopper, um, for the first time, you want to go to View and make sure Obscure Components is checked. Otherwise, it's not going to show you all of the components. It just kind of creates a condensed, um, abridged version of the, the toolbars. So once we have, the, we have this, we're going to go to Vector. We're going to find the, the unit Z. So that's going to be the vector in the Z direction. That's up. They say Z in the UK. Um, so we're going to plug in Z to this uh, vector component. And you'll see that it's moving it up 1. And 1 could be either be feet, it could be meters. It all depends on what your Rhino units are set to. So I, have, I opened up a template for large units feet. So it's using feet as my unit of measurement. Um, so it's, it's going to move this up one foot because one is 
the default here. I want to move this up three feet, 36 inches. So I'm going to move this up by plugging in this uh, slider. So now I have three plugging in, moving that curve up three feet. And so I can then play with this slider and see this change in real time, and I can get the height that I want for that handrail. Okay, and then from there, I want to make this three-dimensional. Yeah, I could bake this, right? Middle mouse click, bake, and I have curves in Rhino, and it's just going to bake them onto whatever your current layer is, um, unless you've added a component in Grasshopper to tell it which layer to bake to. Control Z, open up Grasshopper again, and I want to take this curve and pipe it. So I'm going to use the pipe command, which is under surface, freeform, you'll see pipe here. Again, I can double click, type pipe, drag it in that way. So what is this outputting? It's outputting the geometry. So whatever just got moved is coming out in, in G. And then it's also giving me transformation data, which I'm not interested in at the moment. So when I have a pipe, it's asking for information as well. So it needs a base curve, which I have here. And it, I need to give it a radius. It's going to default to 1. You can see 1 in the text box. So it's going to default to 1 when I plug this in. So that means the radius is one foot, which is massive for a handrail. Um, so what we want to do is make this, uh, let's say, a one inch radius, so it ends up being two inches. Okay, and then if I want to, if I want that to be one inch, and I know that I'm in feet, I have to say one divided by twelve, and so I'm going to use 0 0.083. 0 0.083 and you notice when I added that slider it actually created a decimal so I have a little bit more tolerance here than I did when this first slider was just using integers right so you can edit the slider you can right click on it and um, or double click on it and you can modify it here you can give it a name We'll call this um, handrail radius. And you can tell it, do you want this um, to be a floating point? Do you want it to be integer? So right now it's rounding um, to the third decimal place here. And you can give it a minimum and maximum. So you can set the maximum to be 100, minimum to negative 100 if you wanted to. You can set the range. You can change all of that here. So now it's it updated to the name of my slider here, handrail radius. And this is a good habit to get into because when you're writing really long scripts, you're going to forget what you're writing, right? You're going to forget little things. What? Why did I put this component here, right? So another way to help remind yourself is to select components. You can middle mouse click, and this little amoeba icon is group. So I can group these components together, and I can name the group. So if I wanted to name this Move Edge, I can right-click on it. And then up here, there's an empty text box. I can just type Move Edge, Enter. And now this has been given a name. And so later on, when these algorithms become really long, you can kind of subdivide them this way, and you, you won't forget what you were doing with that component a series of components. So the handrail radius um, is going to be going into this thing that we just piped. So it's asking for the radius. That's what we're supplying. And again, you can change this and, and watch it react in real time. Okay, and then once we're happy with that, we can bake it. Um, let's say we wanted to put uh, verticals in this. Um, we want to create some kind of balustrade or we wanted um, an edge of our, maybe this is a glass handrail. Um, what we could do is sub, 
take that, you know, we have the pipe, we're going to leave that off to the side. What I want to do is take this edge, divide it into points, and then also divide the original curve into points, and then connect those two lines with lines, right? So we'll have a bunch of verticals connecting these. Okay, so there's a, another really simple uh, component. If you go to curve, there's um, a series of under division, you'll see divide curve. There's different ways to do it. You can divide based on length, or you could divide based on the number of segments you want. In this case, I'm going to divide based on the length. So assuming I want maybe three feet between balustrades for this handrail, it's asking for a curve and the length of the segment. So this is my moved curve. Right, that's the one that I've moved up already. I can plug that into the C. And it's also asking for a length. So I'm going to say 3 feet. Just type 3. And so every 3 feet, you'll see that there's a point now emerging. And so that's going to give me even spacing around this whole thing. And so I could do the same. I'm going to take this, just kind of move it up to create an organized canvas here. I'm going to take this, control C, control V, pasting it down. And instead of plugging in the moved line, I'm going to plug in the original lines. Okay, so now these are also being subdivided and those are here. All right, so I have the original points and the moved points. I can then take that, between those two points, I can generate a line. So under curve primitive, you'll see line. And this is a really simple component. It just creates a line between two points. In this case, it's a series of points. I have 68 points just in this one component, 68 points in this component. So I'm going to plug this into that and then B. And now you'll see that I have verticals emerging, connecting the dots between A and B. All right, so now I have all of these verticals. I can then pipe them as well. And I could either plug them into this. Again, I can hold shift, plug them into that. Or if I wanted to give them a unique radius, I would copy this. So first I'll disconnect that component by holding control, disconnected, then select the pipe component I want, control C, control V, plug that into these lines, and now I can play with this radius independently. And so I want to bake these. Yeah, I could just middle mouse click and bake. And then when I go into Rhino, each of these will be independent. Let's say I want to group them before I bake them so that when I click in Rhino, it selects all of them simultaneously. I can double click and type group, connect that, and I have to flatten it. And now I can middle mouse click on the group and bake it. And now this is all one thing. So it's easier to keep track of these components. And when you bake them, it's, it's great habit to get into to, to bake them. And going back into Grasshopper, let's say I wanted my handrail to be on another layer. I can set it to red, the red layer, and I can now bake my handrail. All right, so my handrail is now on this layer. Everything else is on this default layer. All right, and so make sure to get in the habit of saving a lot. So make sure to save your Grasshopper file. So make sure to save your, hand, your grasshopper file so that when you close this, right, also save your Rhino file. So I'm going to save this. Give it the same name so we, we know they correspond. Um, but then later on, when you open up a new file, And I have a different surface. Let's say um, I just type plane, create a surface here. Go into shaded view. 
I can still open up Grasshopper and you'll notice that everything is unconnected. It's, it doesn't know what geometry to, to associate with because this is now a new file. What I can do is I can right click on surface, set one surface, and now I just reapplied it to this new surface. So if you have a lot of tedious modeling that you do in every project that you do, like stairs or handrails, this could be a really effective workflow so that you can just save this grasshopper file and I'll know that now this is my handrail generating uh, script. So every time I have a handrail in a project, I open this up and I can bake it. If I select these and now I have a handrail. All right, so that's it for this uh, intro.